Hello and welcome to World Rugby Tinkers with Laws again, or Tinkers with Laws. Um, hi, I'm Paul, the guy behind Driving Wall. I'm just going to sort out my curtain behind me, so you've got some that don't have light issues. Hi, I'm Paul, the guy behind uh, Driving Wall. Thank you very much for joining me. World Rugby has announced that they are tinkering or changing um, six laws uh, this time uh, that will come into effect for the next European rugby uh, season, and hence the November internationals will be played under these laws going forward. So uh, just be ready for those when we get to that. So let's just run through, I'm just going to run through what those six laws are, give you my opinion as I think if they're positive or negative, and uh, we'll then I expect hopefully you'll give me your comments below. Don't forget, you can sign up to the Driving More newsletter, link above on Twitter, down below on YouTube. So let's kick off. They're basically around, the laws are around two areas, the scrum and also the breakdown or the tackle area. So let's start off with the ones from the scrum. The first one is handling, uh, sorry, the first one is throwing the ball into the scrum. So the big change here is there's going to be no signal from the referee to the scrum half. Um, the scrum half must throw the ball in straight. That's not a change, that's the same. But he's now allowed to align their shoulder with the middle of the scrum and hence be closer to their side, giving them an advantage. So what's the no signal from the referee? Well, that was brought in a couple of years ago because the idea was that the scrum had to be stable uh, before he would signal to the scrum half. Uh, and so neither side was, but so the idea was that would stop sides from pushing early. That uh, it's interesting to see they're going to try and take that away and we'll see what impact that has. Uh, but I think we'll see that means that we'll, that uh, uh, there may be a bit more shoving, a bit less of a stable scrum. Their rationale is to promote scrum stability, a fair contest for possession, while also giving the advantage to the team throwing in. Now, obviously, you're going to give advantage to the team throwing in by by uh, um, putting the scrum half closer um, to his side, uh, but you do have to enforce the straight bit of it. If you don't enforce, enforce the straight bit, it's going to be a total waste of time, isn't it? Let's be honest. Um, and they don't enforce the straight bit now, so I don't see why that should change, even though they have had directives saying, let's start enforcing it. So uh, personally, I think this one might be actually leading to less stable scrums because without that, without the referee signal um, to put in. Next, handling in the scrum exception. The number eight shall be allowed to pick the ball, uh, pick the ball up from the feet of the second rows. That seems absolutely fine to me. Uh, I thought he could basically unbind and pick it up anyway, uh, but apparently not. So there you go. That's how much I know about the laws. Uh, but um, so I thought that would. To, and that's to promote continuity. That seems fine to me. I don't see why the, why the end rate shouldn't be able to pick it up from there. Striking after the throw-in. Once the ball touches the ground in the tunnel, any front row player may use either foot to win to try to win possession of the ball. One player from the team who put the ball in must strike for the ball. So in the past. The props weren't um, allowed to strike. It had to be the hooker, uh, I, I believe. So this means they can all now strike, which means uh, the opposition um, prop who is closer to where the ball's getting put in could, in theory, have a go at striking for the ball uh, ahead of the hooker of the um, attacking side. So the defending prop could, um, defending tight head could, in theory, have a go. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if anyone tries that tactic uh, because, obviously, it it's definitely will not be expected um, especially early on. Uh, so, uh, but the interesting thing is the attacking side have to strike for the ball. Um, so again, we'll see how that uh, promotes or reduces the amount of feeding uh, in the scrum. Uh, obviously, one of the players now has to put their foot up forward. So we'll see how, how that happens. And whether the teams will wait until um, they have stability and that's strong before they do that. Uh, to me, making someone strike is a good idea. Make it be anyone in the front row does also make it easier on the referee. He doesn't have to try and figure out whose foot is there. Um, I very doubt, I doubt many props will be looking at striking for the ball anyway. So uh, a small thing around that one. So those are the laws that are changing around the scrum, which is, uh, so, which I think a couple of them are common sense that uh, obviously the unbreak picking up and any, letting any player strike. So what uh, making the uh, attacking team strike is a good, is a good move forward but I'm a bit unsure about, about not having the referee signal because I think that might destabilise the scrum, but we'll see. The next set of laws are around the tackle and the ruck. So first up, the tackler must get up before playing the ball 
and then can only play from their side of the tackle gate. And the rationale is to make the tackle book simpler for players and referees and more consistent with the rest of the law. So yes, this is one of those things that Richard McCaw did a lot in his career um, and a lot of people would shout, he's offside, um, because he was a tackler, he would stand up and just pick the ball up, um, often on the, um, the attacking player's side. Now, that, is a, that now will not be allowed uh, and goes away, which is, uh, I think, something we've, I think I've talked about before uh, as, as probably happening. So uh, that gets rid of that piece, and it, and it does make it simpler, giving, making sure that all players have to do the same thing and have to arrive the same way into the tackle does simplify things for the ref and also for the fans to understand what's going on. And that's part of what this will be about. The next one, a ruck commences when at least one player is on their feet and over the ball, um, which is on the ground. Um, at this point, the offside lines are created. Uh, players on their feet may use their hands to pick up the ball as long as it, this is an immediate. Um, as soon as an opposition player arrives, no hands can be used. Now, this one, uh, the rationale to make the ruck simpler for players and referees. Uh, again, this, this basically rules out the uh, Italian tactic we saw um, against England in the Six Nations and something that we see a lot in uh, Sevens rugby. And maybe this one might impact Sevens more than it impacts seven, than it impacts Fifteens. Uh, most of them, I'm not entirely clear if this is being impl implemented in Sevens as well. But it's a very common Sevens tactic to not create a ruck uh, and therefore be able to swarm around uh, and, and block off passing. So... Uh, that maybe sevens is one that's more impacted from this than fifteens. We said it's very rare um, that we see it in fifteens, uh, though we have seen it in Super Rugby previously before. Uh, and finally, um, other ruck offences: a player must not kick the ball out of a ruck. The player can only hook it in a backwards motion uh, to promote player welfare and to make it consistent with the scrum law. So, currently, you'll see a lot of players will try and hack the ball through. Uh, that will be not allowed now. Uh, and the ground, the ground, the reason for that is uh, players flashing, making a kick and hitting other players in the head uh, is basically what this is all about. So it's stopping other players getting kicked who are on the ground. Now, is that going to mean players are going to be much, are going to be slower at getting away from the ball, or rolling away from the ruck? Maybe so. Uh, we'll just have to see. That's something that the referees will have to um, keep an eye on uh, and keep there. I mean, people talk about rucking has meant that it meant players are laying in places they wouldn't have done in the past. So overall, these rules, um, it's simplifying what the tackler can do, which is good. Um, it's simplifying when a ruck forms, which again has been good, which is good because we've had inconsistencies from some refs um, previously. Now, it's a shame that it takes away the fun of seeing uh, an innovative um, tactic like uh, we saw from Italy, um, but I think the upsides much be definitely beat the downsides. And the final one about kicking through, uh, it's something that we've seen. It doesn't make uh, for a messy game when players are doing that. Sometimes a messy game is a good, a good game, though. So uh, I'm not really that fussed either way. But because of the player welfare side of things, uh, I can see the point of doing it. So those are the new trial laws that are coming in to effect for the next season. Um, now, the other thing that has been pointed out on, on some podcasts is that these are being phased in like laws are normally. So... Uh, this will impact the start of the European season, uh, but won't come into effect in the Southern Hemisphere until next year. Um, the only rules laws that have come in uh, sort of mid-season were those head, were the high tackle laws, which are really about player welfare. Uh, otherwise, all the laws have been brought in in this manner. It does make it confusing for um, for some for some uh, audiences, especially the Southern Hemisphere ones, in that uh, there's going to be some laws that are going to change between the Rugby Championship and the November Internationals. Uh, and so they'll be used to seeing the game played one way and then suddenly it'll change um, in these areas. Um, but that's, that's just, if you're going to change the laws, it's going to change at some point for people. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, as I say, I'm Paul with the Live Behind Driving Mall. Uh, please feel free to comment. I'm always up for a good rugby chat. Uh, and also do sign up for that newsletter, please. Um, link above on Twitter, down below on YouTube. Share it with all your friends, give the old thumbs up and all that kind of stuff on YouTube as well. It all helps get the word out there. Thank you very much for joining me and I will be back next week um, with more of these videos uh, and also the Hash Rugby Chat podcast as well.